three minutes, ponder on what a just planetary financial ecosystem looks like and on what it is based. And now let us bring our attention to the seed thought for our vision. The first line of our vision states, the will to good vitalizes the economics of the society. The principle of right sharing and right human relations are integrated into our daily life and ideals. Given the principles of right sharing and right human relations, what ideals might we integrate into our economy? Let us ponder on this for the next two minutes. Now, lastly, let's bring our attention to the seed thought of our invocation. In our meditation, we attempt to transform our financial system by making the following invocation. We call forth the financial ecosystem of the new civilization, one that is reconstituted energetically, reconstructed for sustainability, and reformed to serve the many. Let us first ponder, what would a financial system reconstituted energetically look like?
and now reconstructed for sustainability. And lastly, reform to serve the many. Let us now come back together and take a breath. In our meditation, we attempted to look at three seed thoughts. Again, our purpose to co-create with hierarchy in the working out of a divine plan to form a just planetary financial ecosystem. Our vision, the will to good, vitalize the economics of society and the principles of right sharing and uh, right relations are integrated into our daily life and ideals. And finally, we call forth the financial ecosystem of the new civilization, one that is reconstituted energetically, reconstructed for sustainability and reformed to serve the many. So I'd like to open the floor now for the next 10 minutes and uh, anyone who would like, please share your impressions. Judy, thank you for your introduction. One of the thoughts I had when we were uh, talking about purpose is that the future is really now that it becomes increasingly clear that 10 years ago, we were at the state of imagination. But now when we imagine, we actually see examples. Our, our own consciousness has changed toward different practices. So I had that sense that, that it gave me a, a, like a jump start in terms of how to be thinking about this new civilization. It's no longer in the future. We see the seeds of it here and now. Thank you, Martha. Um, I should add, please raise your hand if you, if you want to share some impressions. Uh, Jeffrey, do you want to unmute yourself? Go ahead. Sure, thank you so much, and and uh, really great to connect. Um, I have three really strong in in our reconstituted energetically. I would like to see an economy without fear, where fear is out of the equation. and reconstructed for sustainability. I would like to see 
an economy based on the principles of nature where nothing goes to waste and everything is used and 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 everything is interconnected and finally i'm reformed to serve the many that it is patterned on um it, it is created in a, in a pattern that allows participation amongst all and it's the idea of creating that pattern from the level of intuition to mind and to creating uh, those systems that allow that um, interconnection. So, uh, and again, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Alex? Go ahead, Alex. Go ahead, Alice, you're unmuted. Might be a problem with the microphone for Alice. Yes, she's unmuted, but cannot hear you, Alice, if you're speaking. Frida. Uh, can I just, uh, while Alice is working on our technical issues, just, uh, I had, when we talked about a just financial system, uh, I had an image of Lady Justice with balance and, and the idea of balancing spiritual and, and material uh, in, in that just system with the soul, of course, being the Lady Justice. All right, thanks, Bridget. Thank you. Alice, do you want to try again? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It was a problem with the microphone. I was saying that um, I had almost the same impressions uh, as Jeffrey. I think it was Jeffrey who spoke before. Um, an ecosystem. I thought about ecological. We are one. We are not separated, but together. And we are one with all our fellow men, and we are one with the planet and the word must be with money not to spend not to waste money but to spend to use money in the right way and when we produce money with our work we also should um, transform the word not to work but to service in some way so i think the form money is also going to be um, changed and we see that because our notes and coins are going to change and we already have cards credit cards and we are going to have bitcoins probably we are uh, stopping seeing the money so and that will be easier to use this energy for right purposes thank you Thank you, Alice. Uh, Christine? Go ahead. Christine, Christine. you're on yeah. We cannot hear you, Christine. Something with your microphone. Maybe well to remember that the microphone is on the left part of your screen of the control panel, and you push that to green uh, 
when you wish to speak. Thank you. Try again, Christy. Christine, there's definitely something with your microphone. Maybe you can try to connect with another device, maybe from your phone. Um, Frida, there, um, the comment you uh, placed is uh, visible for organizers and panelists only. So maybe you can re. Uh... Okay, I'm going to read this, um, mm -hmm. this, I believe, from Risa. Um, and it's anchoring our meditation thoughts, ideas, ideals making practically our daily life anchoring the new economy, the new economics, how to take action, thus anchoring the new economy economics in our lives. One supporting only those people, companies, businesses, social media, etc., that supports the well-being of humanity. Two, taking ourselves um, and sorry, taking ourselves um, out of those companies, businesses, social media, etc., that does not support the new humanity and the new education, the new thinking, the new area of humanity. And finally, making actions of sharing each day to others, thus forming the foundations of the new sharing society. Thank you. Okay, Christine sent me, she was, we were being, uh, we were muting her, so let's try Christine again. Yeah, Christine, we have you unmuted, so uh, try again. Christine, we cannot hear you. So maybe we'll try later. There's another raised hand. Okay. Uh, Andrea. Andrea. Oh, now we can. Feedback. Maybe that's Christine. Okay, Christine, I'm go I am going to mute you. There was just some feedback there. Uh, Andrea, you want to go ahead? Yes. Just, you know, the images that were coming to me were, were more just concepts of, again, just sort of repeating what, what we know at a grander scale, which was just groups creating for other groups, that the sharing and the generosity becomes with others instead of accumulation by the self, um, recognizing abundance um, not in the I, but for the other. And it just is that constant, that, that constant energy of just generosity, of just taking the vision out of ourselves and out of a competition to achieve and to accumulate and, and looking into that powerful feeling of, of giving instead of receiving. And, and, and I think that is such a palpable emotion that's within all of our hearts, that when that collectively comes together, there will be this extraordinary joy just in tapping into that feeling of being able to give to somebody else and that feeling that we all know when we give that really is the basis of i think human love that's all thank you yes i agree thank you Andrew. okay i think we're going to move on now we will hear from Catherine now who will introduce the section on models and ideals Catherine? Mm -hmm. Thank you. As part of our Sunday meditation process, we found ourselves invoking a new financial ecosystem 
based on right sharing and right human relationship with all kingdoms. So as we've just experienced, that begins to generate thoughts and images. And this led our group members to ask, what would it really take to bring this about? Would it be more than just donating money to good causes? We started to research and share together some of the emerging economic models for a new civilization based on the principles in our meditation. So in this next section, members will give a taste of some of our findings. As we talk about the principles on which these models are based, see which ones jump out at you and consider using them as creative seeds in your ongoing meditations. When we look at these models, we look at them from the perspective of soul as part of the knowledge petals of the egoic lotus. They are not end products, although some of them are already being used in pilot systems. They are being viewed as energetic systems. And they will follow the same three themes, reconstituted, reconstructed, and reformed. The first model we wish to share is called sacred economics. Over to you, Silvana. Thank you, Catherine, and thank you for those beautiful, enlightened impressions. Um, I would yet like to speak about sacred economics, which can be defined as reconstituted energetically, because it does require an absolute spiritual and philosophical shift. To make sacred an economy that serves the all and not the few underpins the work of Charles Eisenstein, who is an author and visionary for the new era. His work promotes the philosophical attitude towards life, abundance, and relationships with our local community. It is that radical consciousness shift that is needed to transcend competition towards greater collaboration and community-based living and values. Next slide. And a key component of sacred economics is gifting circles. To embed within all of our transactions and services a culture of gifting, which stimulates a gifting consciousness. It is circuitry in the divine flow of resource sharing and fosters equitable particip participation in the one life. Gifts circulate rather than accumulate. And as it was alluded before, our currency is decaying, which then ensures that wealth remains a function of flow rather than of owning. And Charles practices gifting by making all his work freely available on his website. And he states, we're not separate from the world, so every choice we make generates a field. Any act of love, kindness, forgiveness, or generosity creates a field of the same energy, which then positively affects the whole world. Next slide. And, 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 of course, to reduce our consumption through some of these means, which is recycling, upcycling, growing our own produce, supporting local producers, gifting, sharing, barter and exchange. These are already occurring and are often accompanied by local currencies, of which there are thousands operating in many countries. And they encourage community and interdependence. And very importantly, to be able to create that equity is to create a safety net for all global citizens by introducing a standardised, non-means-tested income, currently known as a universal basic income, to minimise disadvantage and the dignified access to basic human needs such as food, shelter, education, transport, such ideas provide a thought form of solution that helps to guide humanity to slay the hydra of money and pass through this important test in triumph. 
and thus allow men and women to be free to live and move in beauty and to seek the lighted way. Let us take a pause to assimilate what is needed for a radical consciousness shift that embraces the, the economy of the one life. Now, Karen will speak to us about the donut economy. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Savannah. The, the donut economics by Kate Rayworth was very inspiring to our whole group. And when I was turned on to her book, I gobbled it up. I just read it beginning to end. And I was so happy to hear about how she approached this new economic model of having donut economics. It is on our foundation restructured for sustainability. And Kate Rayworth describes this as a global compass for the 21st century. And what she has done is re-envisioned and looked at old concepts and move them into the 21st century, the Aquarian time, by taking a pen and redrawing. So when she drew the donut, she came up with the concept of an ecological ceiling and a social foundation. And within those two spaces live the safe and just space for humanity. There were nine environmental ceilings, boundaries, determined. They're called nine dimensions, these environmental ceilings, and there are 12 dimensions of social foundations. The 12 dimensions are derived from this internationally agreed minimum standards of social um, living as identified by the world's governments in the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. The nine dimensions of environmental ceiling are planetary boundaries that protect the key earth system processes on which humanity depends, as identified by Rockstrom et al. in 2009. So as you look at this donut shape, you see that we want to stay within the ceiling of ecology to protect the planet and allow people to thrive by not falling short of a foundation of social needs, clean water, food, health, education, a political voice and gender equality are of the many. And so her principles were about thriving and it unites all humanity to take a look and recognize that we're moving from old thought patterns around economy, such as GDP or the economic man, to looking at humanity as socially adaptable and to looking at instead of GDP and constantly growing, to look at what it means to thrive without having to grow. So her book was written in 2017 as the concept had been adopted internationally. And she said, we need to think in seven different ways, seven different ways, redraw and reformulate our vision. And one specific is that we need to nurture human nature, that we are not individualistic, that we're really socially adaptable humans. And another is that we need to design within our economies such that we don't just have a mechanical equilibrium, but that we have dynamic complexity amongst all our operating factors. So within this space, we find socially just. Many places have adopted this. So even for instance, Nanaimo City in Vancouver Island, Canada, the city council says 
that they will adopt going forward as of 2020, December 2020, that they are using the donut economic model for all their city policy. There's projects going around um, by organizations that are collaborating and it's called Thrive Initiative. And then what they're doing is focusing on downscaling what would be this planetary and big picture into small manageable city portraits where the model is used in order to experiment and try and work it out and work out kinks and bring in all voices, all departments of government and organizations. To that end, we will look at the donut model as compared and mapped with this sustainable development goals. So for instance, here, it's a little technical, but what we see is we see the same donut model and the same space for just humanity to thrive, but we've mapped it with our SDG goals. And as you see on the left, the SDG goals mapping the social foundation that Rayworth identified, we have goals one through 10. So from ending poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, education, gender equality, all through, are mapped on the inner circle of this social foundation. So this shows us that the focus of the goals is highly specialized and, and, and working towards meeting those needs. And on the other hand, we have the environmental ceiling where goals 11, 12, 13 to 17 are also mapped. The green circle indicates the focus of the goal, like I said, and if you look up at the top, the goal 13 is climate action. And so that's an aligned and land use change, which is about forestry and, and allowing the forest to be preserved is, is related to goal 15, life on land. Biodiversity loss is also regarding life on land. And you can trace your eye around and see that the, as they are mapped, we are working towards those goals. Um, I think that's what I'll share for now. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. I'm going to talk today about another model that uh, is close to my heart, and that's permaculture. Uh, for those of you who joined us yesterday on Friday for the Aquarian New Moon presentation, you probably heard Aryo speak uh, briefly about permaculture. So most people think about permaculture as a form of sustainable agriculture, but it can also encompass economic systems. At its core are three basic principles care for the earth, care for people, and share the wealth, or what we would call right sharing. So permaculture at its core seeks to mimic nature and apply what we can learn from natural ecosystems to human systems. The permaculture approach looks at waste from one part of the system as input into another part creating this dynamic circle of life. Next slide. So why permaculture? Well, because permaculture is good for society, it's good for the economy, and it's good for the environment. Within these interlocking circles, we see that of the promise is that of a better tomorrow and a framework that can lead us to sustainable development. The interlocking systems of per permaculture support local economies. They provide an abundance that can alleviate or eliminate poverty can mitigate climate change and build a dynamic and resilient world. And you can see from this side, all of the components uh, I'm not going to read everyone, but the components of, of life that are contributed by permaculture. Thank you. Next slide. So 
So permaculture uses a systems approach. Through careful observation of how systems work and interact is key to understanding and adapting uh, the permaculture method. We ask ourselves questions. Uh, it's experimental in nature. So we think, is this working? How can it be tweaked? How could it operate better? Changes are made very slowly and carefully and very creatively. The edges or boundaries of our system are used as a starting point and a space for creativity. The surplus of the system is shared and the goal is no waste. Many of the problems of our modern world, if we look at them, pollution, environmental degradation, species extinction, and so on, are usually the result of a good system that is taken to extremes without understanding their impact on other natural or human systems. All this permaculture seeks to put right by building these interlocking systems that meet the core values. The permaculture philosophy is now expanding from small individual farms to whole communities. And in its promise are whole, healthy, functional, abundant communities that meet human needs. So as we saw from Karen's demonstration, this is the sweet spot in that donut. Much of the information on permaculture is freely available. And if you'll see our, resort, it, our resources page, you'll see some links to valuable permacultural resources. Thank you. The last model I'm going to present, and it's called the World Marshall Plan. The World Marshall Plan is a visionary plan to rehabilitate the global economy, designed to be a multinational effort, similar to the Marshall Plan agreed on after World War II to re rehabilitate Europe. It's based on an innovative model that was called the Self-Financing World Marshall Plan by Pieter Koistra, a Dutch artist and innovator. But now it's simply referred to as the World Marshall Plan. And although it's still very much in the planning stage because the implementation is going to take quite a coordinated effort, Right now, the best place to access information on it is through the Interplanetary System Geneva website. Next slide, please. The key reforms in this plan are that it would use a very centralized world banking system to administer a small stipend annually to every individual to be used mainly for basic needs. You can see that this would be a huge reform from our current systems that are based on competitive national economies where world values are based on consumption and corporate profits, and there's a widening disparity in personal wealth. So the, the system, it's only using a small stipend, but it, it's like the beginning idea of what a basic income guarantee might be like by at least providing a little bit of extra income to be used for basic needs. The second key reform is that it brings us back to emphasize a hard economy based on the exchange of marketable goods and services reformed away from right now our soft economy seems to be going greater and greater including debt service transaction fees without production and where taxes and charity are the main sources of assistance the important point is that this is a supplemental system to jumpstart a production-based economy 
and today's soft money systems would continue until they are ready to be phased out. Next slide. So this is an attempt to make it a little easier to see how different elements in this system interact. In the middle, we have a global central bank and administration that would fund a digital currency and also act as a clearinghouse because there's a need to match applications for the stipends to the producers. So what about these annual stipend applications? Now we're back individuals at the on the right side are submitting applications to community committees uh, and they have to be reviewed locally on pre-established criteria and then forwarded to centralized data collection. So for example, stipends cannot be used for debt payments or savings. That there's, there would be criteria to make sure it's basic needs and product based. Then we're back in the central administration matching applications to producers also in the same database. So very much production is matched to need and thus balance is favored over growth. At the same time, from the producer's standpoint, the fact that they have guaranteed payment, this allows them to provide wages to workers who are then in a better economic position to grow the economy. And they're not borrowing money for inventory. So that's pulling us back again to a balance. And now the third point that's really helpful in this model is at the bottom where local banks are involved because they interact with the central bank, exchange digital currency into local funds and to pay the producers. And so this is another aspect of both employment and keeping things involved at the local level. So, I mean, this is a really brief overview and you can see that it includes reforms, but it's trying not to move too fast as very visionary. We see elements of this already at work in our uh, database collections and as, as we talked about the beginning of almost a digital currency, but there are a lot of pieces and a lot of agreement that would have to come together before this could come into operation. It's just a brief overview, but a very strong example of a visionary reform. And this closes our group segment on economic models. So we've left a little time for discussion and questions. The models were sacred economy, donut economy, permaculture, and the world Marshall Plan. Frida's gonna moderate the discussion again. Thank you. Uh, so again, if you want to speak, uh, just put up your hand. And if you don't, you can also just um, put a question in or into the chat, and I will keep an eye and hopefully read any of your comments or questions. Frida, while people are gathering their thoughts, might I offer an observation when I heard these excellent presentations, and I'm aware of how hard everyone struggled to keep um, massive amounts of material at some, some very elementary stage. But when the presentations were going on, I thought of the law of periodicity, where those of us who are studying students in occult law, the law of periodicity is when energetic uh, elements blend together the um, dynamic of forward progress of uh, spiral cyclic process and of rotary motion. And when I heard the examples being offered, I actually, it seemed to me that there was 
the actual application of that law, because if you notice, all of the plans uh, were built or designed, They're, they are uh, designed based on the current conditions in which we live, but from a higher place, as Charles Eisenstein said, that there's the new economy will take on a sacred nature and it will be dynamic. It will be dynamic and flexible. So I, this is meant to be a thank you to those who offered um, such challenging uh, presentations in such a small amount of time. Thanks, Martha. Uh, so Kit uh, has asked about the slideshow that it be available and certainly um, if you want to uh, email us, we are happy to make the slideshow available. And of course, uh, Alec can speak to this, but 2025 Initiative usually hosts these um, webinars and, and creative labs on YouTube afterwards. Uh, and Christine, I know you wanted to speak before. Um, maybe we can try again to see if we can hear you. Here, you're unmuted, Christine. Go ahead. No, we're still not hearing you, Christine. Sorry. Uh, while, while we're waiting, can I just mention uh, discussions that the group has had about the change from, from charity towards dignity and uh, the fact that every child of the earth uh, really inherits uh, the value, some value from the resources of the earth, hopefully used responsibly. So it's, it's not charity, it's actually their right as citizens of the earth. Yes, very good. Thanks, Bridget. Uh, Sheldon, go ahead. You're unmuted, or you need to unmute yourself, I think, Sheldon. Well, I just wanted to say that um, not only this, what a marvelous synthetic presentation um, this has been, and in a time when so many things are, are trying to, or in a state of change um where the the new is is coming through um this has been so not only refreshing to pick up some of the themes that have been been around for a long time on the finance side of things i just i think back to some of our friends some of whom have moved on i'm thinking about bernard leotar thinking about hazel henderson charles is still with us but some of the great thinkers that have been thinking along these lines and then what you all have done to put this together with my gosh, beauty <laughs> with um, and such such rich clarity, tying it in with the with with the, with the goals. So, some of you know I I tend to be positive person. I guess I got to put it that way. So I see so many things that are beginning to come to the fore after the the as we finish up our internal work here in the United States with uh, our former president. I, we're going to be able to really take a look at how these things are coming into being. And the fact that you all have asked these questions about, not asked, but drawn us into the meditative focus with the, the inner group, the kingdom of heaven, you might say, to put it on a little different language system, um, and that we get a sense of how that is playing itself back and forth. Um, I find this um, um, joyful, <laughs> exhilarating and confirmation of, of where we're heading as we as we move together. So thank you for this, uh, all of you who have been so much a part of it. Thank you, Sheldon. That was lovely. Okay, now Christine has, uh, as we know, hasn't been able to speak to us, but here she posted something in the chat, so I'm just going to read it. Uh, she says, I see the World Marshall Plan as a promotion of the Great Reset presented at Davos. 
gives all power to the elites. Uh, I um, will allow this that we lose control individually, think locally, give to the people of club according to need, caring and sharing. Uh, maybe I'll just ask uh, um, Catherine if she wants to speak a little bit to that. Catherine? Can you rephrase that a little bit for me, Frida? I, I, I missed the actual Well, um, so Christine has said that she sees the World Marshall Plan as the promotion of the Great Reset uh, as presented at Davos. Oh, and the Reset, for yeah. The elites. So I think you have a different view. So, so let's hear your view on, on the, the Marshall Plan. Well, uh, one of the images that sticks in my mind, uh, there, there was a YouTube on it. Um, he was pouring cream in a cup of black coffee <laughs> just to lighten it. It, it, it wasn't, it, it didn't, ask people to make a total immediate reset so we wouldn't get the you don't have to get this huge resistance but we could try with a small annual stipend and criteria you know to so that it's used to promote balance in production and hard economy again um, at least i appreciated that part of the plan for such a great long-term undertaking that they seem to have a way to start small. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, I'm just looking to see any more. Anyone else wish to speak or have a comment? Okay, anybody on the panelists uh, want to make a comment? Frida, I would just like to uh, reiterate Sheldon's point and, and the idea of um, doing this work with joy and uh, avoiding the sort of depression that comes with some of the uh, suffering that's going on in the world and and uh, seeing the positive uh, you know energy follows thought seeing the positive seems to be uh, a requirement to pull this uh, new economy through Thank Rita, the yes, I, it, following along that line, I appreciate the challenge to find the transitional spaces that are so imperfect and yet have within them the capacity to take us to better places. Uh, I think a lot about that with the sustainable development goals. They're so imperfect and yet we hold on to them because they're beacons of those uh, patterns of thought that help change our minds that the, the issue with humans as we know as we live in such maya no matter how much we meditate we aren't going to wake up suddenly and develop all the patterns needed to create circular sharing economies. So the challenge in the in assistance to the Aquarian age for me is to find where those transitional spaces are that open the imagination to begin the work. Um, it's a well taken point that there are uh, inefficiencies in all of these models that they do represent ideals, but they are ever, ever imperfect and perfecting. Thank you. Martha, and we have a comment from Antoinette. She says, superb presentation group, much to ponder and take forward into my life. So thank you, Antoinette. 
And so again, uh, any uh, anyone want to speak? Just raise your hand, or you can also uh, type into the uh, chat, and I will read it out for you. While we're waiting, I'll just say myself that um, he's very inspired. I don't know. Uh, for those of you who know Ario Heinsola, he's a member of our group, but he really takes his uh, commitment to sustainability to heart and really lives uh, a sustainable life and uh, certainly practices uh, the kind of permaculture philosophy um, that we were talking about, uh, that I was talking about, he was talking about it on Friday, and I brought out some of these ideas. These are ideas that are very practical. That people are putting them into use in the world right now. And um, as they expand from being these small models into being larger and larger expressions within whole communities, I think we will start to see this sort of sustainable um, living really come to the fore. So thanks everyone. Let's see if I have any hands raised here. Uh, yeah, I don't see any. Okay, well, we're going to continue on. I'm going to turn it over to Martha now to talk to us a little bit about uh, the sustainable development goals. Over to you, Martha. Thank you, Frida. Um, I'm not certain if in our resources we have the your booklet called Spiritualizing Money. So uh, if it's not there, I request that you put in the chat box your booklet, uh, a reference to okay. it. Sure. Been working this for many years. And I'd also like to offer a Valentine to everyone who's listening. It came from one of our wise members in meditation during the med after the meditation this morning. She quoted DK, who described money as concretized energy. However, when rightly shared, Money becomes love shared from afar. As we bring the creative lab to conclusion, I'd like to return to a section of our meditation called Naming the Goals. So the 17 goals as named, we do it in a very brief section because while we want to um, honor the great achievement offered by this fact that 193 countries within the UN represented uh, a cons bypass by consensus, something that represents the most expansive point of global intercooperation ever achieved a fractal of the plan, as stated earlier. They are embedded in the current system in which we live. But with a small amount of insight, we, re we recognize them as a tipping point away from violence, from selfish nationalist interests toward nonviolent cooperation toward brotherhood in right relationship based in human dignity, earth justice, and universal ethics. As these goals will be replaced by a higher standard of intercooperation in 2030, it is to this end we focus our meditation. What does it look like now? And what might it look like then? In less than two years of weekly meditation, we found expression to the lighted spiritual aspiration which lies behind them and without which they cannot be achieved. So let us turn to a brief naming of the goals and the spiritual principles embedded in their essence as we seek to build upon the elevation of humanity's consciousness whose arc directs to this new civilization. Please do not assume that the uh, goal as stated represents the only spiritual aspiration. That's far from the case. It's simply uh, a trigger to 
recognize the gap that exists between the gift from the masters already embedded in our consciousness and the realities of those agreements that we've been able to carve out on a global level. Number one, no poverty. Humanity awakens to soul consciousness. Two, zero hunger. Humanity hungers to unite with the soul as fundamental physical needs are met. Three, good health, well-being. Humanity masters the art of healing through energy. Four, quality education. Humanity declares the fact of the soul. Five, gender equality. Humanity knows all identities unite in one. Six, clean water and sanitation. Humanity purifies its intention while recognizing water's sacred role. Seven, affordable, clean energy. Humanity expresses life more abundant and finds right rhythm in the law of economy. Eight, decent work and economic growth. Humanity labors to align with soul and works to evolve group relations. Nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Humanity aligns all systems with the planetary laws of nature. 10, reduced inequalities. Humanity sees all persons are on the path and supports the unique position of each. 11, sustainable cities and communities. Humanity builds all communities on universal brotherhood. 12, responsible consumption and production. Humanity honors each kingdom's role and consumes in goodwill and right relationship. 13, climate action. Humanity recognizes Earth's sacred destiny and acts accordingly. 14, life below water. Humanity protects all habitats in all ecosystems alongside the Davis. 15, life on land. Humanity participates in and assists in redeeming all substance. 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. Humanity embraces the culture of peace. 17, humanity lives in right relationship with all life. We will be closing our presentation with a great invocation. 
But first, let us spend a minute of silence in the UN Meditation Room, as we do each Sunday as a regular part of our meditation. Let us take ourselves to the UN Meditation Room and join our elders and those inner workers in and out of form upon the lighted way who work there. Let us now align with Masters of Wisdom, Moya, Joachul, and Rokotsi, who work in the Ashram of Synthesis and guide humanity in the hierarchical work ahead. Their specific mandate is to distribute wisdom Doug Hammarskjöld, Secretary General of the United Nations, who in 1957 dedicated this room and intended the space to be open to all who entered the building, stated, we all have within us a center of stillness surrounded by silence. This house, dedicated to work and debate in the service of peace, should have one room dedicated to silence in the outward sense and stillness in the inner sense. It has been the aim to create in this small room a place where the doors may be open to the infinite lands of thought and prayer. Here we stand together in alert receptivity to the distributive energy given by the Great Triangle, the Avatar of Synthesis, the Buddha, and the Spirit of Peace, who stands behind and pours through the Great Invocation, which will begin and end with the ringing of the singing bowl. I will sound the bell, and after a minute, sound the second bell as Bridget moves into the Great Invocation. As we stand together in the warm embrace of the group, we say the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love, and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love 
and power restore the plan on earth. With love and gratitude. Thank you, everyone. Much appreciation to everyone who joined us today. I think you helped to make the work more effective. And thank you to all the presenters. If anyone would care to join us uh, on our Sunday meditation, it happens at 5 o'clock GMT. Uh, we will put Martha's uh, contact information in the chat box. So that concludes our presentation. The last slide is our resources, and I will turn this over to Alex. Again, thank you. And I apologize. I seem not to be able to find the chat right now. Um, it's just Martha Gallahue at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you, Martha, and thank you, Judy. Um, the resources page that we see on the screen, is it possible to copy it and paste in the chat that those links could be activated? Because they're not clickable from the screen, naturally. Or is there any other way to share those? Um, yeah, I'll try and do it while we're just while we're chatting. I'll just paste it into the chat. So, go thank ahead. you. Much gratitude to you, uh, this great presentation, and once again, this is a beautiful example of an Aquarius group recognizing the need and responding that need with own action. As Tibetan says, that the mm -hmm. meditative work itself is not enough. And if we invoke the higher powers, we're better to be prepared to act. If not, then better not to invoke. And so if your group is uh, uh, working in your small circle but would like to share with the larger community we invite you to contact us and uh, we would help you to organize a creative lab similar to this one on the topic that your group is taking close to your group heart to act on it And um, I see now Frida pasted uh, all the resources into the chat, so that now the, all the links are clickable and available. And one technical comment, uh, I have to apologize. The recording of this Creative Lab started with little delay. There was some technical glitch. So uh, it uh, will be available on the uh, YouTube channel of 2025 Initiative starting from the 12th minutes of the presentation. I apologize for that, but that's the unfortunate uh, rally. Much Thank love so much. and credit. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to, to everyone. It's beautifully I, I, presented. I sent, a, I sent a link for a group talk back if you would like to join. Uh, we have about 20 minutes before the vigil. Uh, Martha, can you repeat that, please? 
I wanted the, uh, our group is about 20 people and uh, many of us are here today. So I offered a group talk back. I get, I can put the link if anybody else would like to join. Uh, let me see how do I do that. Uh, I will. <laughs> um, uh, if I hear you right, so you, your group will gather now right after this uh, Creative Lab. So those who would like to join you now could do that. Is that right? Yes, that, that is correct. And I found the link and I'll put it up for anyone who wants to uh, join us. That's a wonderful idea. Thank you, Marta. Yes, beautiful. So then people who have additional questions could join and ask and yeah i hope it works for you there that uh it, sh it should be directly accessible but i'll look to admit you if yeah the link okay. is still not there uh i see it. Oh, oh yes there it is thank you yes Alex. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, no, it's, it's been sent only to organizers, but I will repost it. Yes, please open it up to everyone. Thank you. I would like uh, uh, to make a special shout out to Karen Soper, who um, kept us on track to pull the slides together and uh, revise and uh, be proceed in orderly fashion. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Martha. My pleasure. Much love and joy to everyone. Thank Till you. Till we meet again. Thank you, Alex.